The semester is almost in. You have to do a write-up for your conversation analysis class. You learn a lot during the course, but you are unsure how to do your analysis and write your final paper. In this video, I'll guide you to do your analysis and then write them down. This video is based on my experience of giving one-on-one -on -one consultations for term paper writing for the past three years. It is mainly designed to help students of introduction to CA for their term papers. It may still be useful for those taking advanced CA or even postgraduate students in CA. First of all, I would like to highlight there are roughly two kinds of CA writing. By CA writing, I mean the kinds of assignment that your course coordinator may give you. The first one is what we call as single case analysis. And the second one is what we can call as collection analysis. There are two main differences between the two of them. The first one is the amount of talk that you have to analyze. For single case analysis, you are tasked to analyze a single case or a stretch of talk. For collection analysis, you are tasked to analyze several extracts or short stretches of talk that bear some similarities to one another, or what we call a collection. The second difference is that in terms of the focus of your analysis, for single case analysis, you are tasked to attend the details, any kind of details within the stretch of talk you are tasked to analyze, unless the assignment specifically asks you to focus on a certain or some aspects of the talk. For collection analysis, your analysis is focused on what makes those small extracts belong in a collection, meaning their similarities. For example, you are making a collection consisting of assessment in dyadic conversation. Okay, I hope I'm making this distinction clear. Feel free to reach me out through the comment section. Before moving on, you need to identify first which of these two is the kind of assignment that you are tasked to do. After you know it, then you can move on. Now let's talk about single case analysis. After helping out students with their single case analysis, I think I can advise you to firstly do your analysis and then write it up. Do not attempt to do your term paper at one go, doing the analysis while writing it up. Do your analysis in three steps. The first one is turn analysis. In this first step, you look at the data, identify the TCUs and turns. You can check my other video for an explanation of TCU and turn. A turn is a unit when speaker change occurs a turn may consist of several TCUs. Do your analysis one TCU at a time. Do a quick characterization. Quickly find an action that a turn or TCU is doing. Then support your characterization with your detailed observations of that turn or TCU. You look at how that particular TCU is structured and produced. The words used, the intonation, the syntactic structure, the information structure, etc. Calibrate your quick characterization so it fits your detailed observation and vice versa. A good turn characterization or action identification should be supported by your detailed observation. For example, let's look at this extract taken from Sheglov 2007. Focus on John's turn in line three. This turn consists of two TCUs. Yeah, and is Judy there? Let's focus on this TCU. Remember, we are analyzing TCU, not line. This is a common mistake that a student make. Line number is simply a handle for us to refer to the transcript. We are analyzing units of talk which are turn and TCU, not the line. Okay, now let's continue. There are at least two ways to quickly characterize this TCU. The first one is that this TCU is a request for information or confirmation checking whether Judy is there. The second one is that this TCU is a request to speak to Judy. 
Now we can see that the first characterization or action identification is simply based on the form, the polar question that the TCU is constructed from. While the second action identification combines the first identification with our knowledge and repertoires on how to ask to speak to someone on the phone. If we can see that there are good evidence that both characterizations are correct, we can leave it at just that and continue with the next turn and TCU. What I did just now is a simple example. There are still different ways to analyze the same TCU. Remember, the quality and value of your analysis depend on your ability to find a term or terms that represent the action of the TCU as close as possible to what the actual TCU is doing. And then support it with your detailed observations. Calibrate your quick characterization so it fits your detailed observations and vice versa. One TCU may do more than one action. If you see some observations that do not support your action identifications, you may find a better word to name the action or add more action to the TCU. After doing the same step to the whole stretch of talk, you can continue to the next step of the analysis. The second step is to analyze the immediate context. Now we are trying to identify potential adjacency pair. What you do for this step is to find how a turn connects to the prior and next. How you do this? For each and every turn in your data, ask the question, does this turn connect with the previous one and how? By how, whether you say the turn is responsive or not, you need to support that claim with your detailed observations. Calibrate your claim so it fits your detailed observations and vice versa. Let's look at this extract again. Earlier, we have identified that the second TCU in line 3 as a request for information whether Judy is there and a request to speak for Judy. Now let's see Alan's next turn. Let's say that we have analyzed Alan's turn in line 4 as well. Our task in second step of analysis is to check whether and how Alan's turn in line 4 connects to its immediate prior turn, which is line 3. We can see that Alan's initial yeah in line 4 addresses the first action of line 3's second TCU, which is request for information whether Judy is there. The answer, answer is yeah. Then just a second addresses the second action of that same TCU, which is a request to speak to Judy. Alan grants the request. Not only that, he also summons Judy to the phone. Just a second is him telling John to wait while he summons Judy to the phone. Now, do this to the rest of the talk. After you are done, you can do the next step of the analysis. The next step is to identify some longer structures of talk in your data, which are project, sequence, as well as sequence expansion. The relationship between project and sequence is similar to the action and TCU. Project is the abstract communicative drive behind the sequence, while the sequence is the concrete implementation of project in the talk. First, in this st step, you identify the project and sequence in your data. Support your claim with your detailed observations. And then, as before, calibrate your identifications so they fit your detailed observations and vice versa. Let's look at this extract again. I'm going to give you some quick sequence identification. Here we have a classical example of a telephone call summon answer sequence. Let's look at this ping box. The phone ring, a person at one end of the line picks it up and then says, hello. Then another person at the other end says, yeah, as a response. Here we have a request granting sequence. John requests to summon Judy 
to the phone, then Alan not only grants the request, but also summons Judy to the phone. And here we have a telephone call opening sequence. To be specific, exchanging caller identification. Okay, as you went through the data with me and look at my analysis, I hope you can see that my analysis are just short examples. Your real analysis should be more detailed than mine. Remember, the quality and value of your analysis lie in your ability to identify different actions, connections, and sequential structures in your data and support them with solid observations. Now that you have your turn, immediate turn, and sequence identified and analyzed, you're ready to write your analysis. Your write-up round consists of at least two steps. The first one is cleanup, and the second one is the actual write-up. What happened in the cleanup stage? Here, we clean up speculation, mind reading, participants evaluation, and what I call time travel analysis. What I mean by speculation is interpretation without any evidence in the data. Mind reading is usually something like participant A tries to be polite with participant B because he doesn't want to make participant B angry at him. Participants evaluation usually something like participant A is a very cunning person. He produces his turn in such a way that participant B cannot reject his request. Time travel analysis uses information that is only available several moments later. You can actually do this stage or step while doing your analysis, but it is always good to do this final check before writing up your analysis. You've done with your analysis and cleanup. Now you can write up and structure your writing into standard academic writing. Start with an introduction. It's always good to roughly mention the sequences that you identify in your data in your introduction. That will give a good overview for the reader and display your understanding of the data. Then structure each of the paragraph, topic sentence, followed by supporting facts. This is very simple. If you're analyzing a single turn in a single paragraph, then the topic sentence is the action of the turn. It's about the action of the turn, while the supporting facts in your paragraph are your detailed observations. Then, for example, if you argue that some turns make up a single sequence, then on your topic sentence, you claim or you argue that you identified that sequence, while the supporting facts are your detailed observations that support that claim, and so on. Then, close your analysis with a short summary of your writing, what you have claimed and identified, and some key observations. You are probably wondering whether you need to do literature review or cite some sources or consult some sources to support your analysis. My answer is, it depends. You need to ask your course coordinator about this. For the course that I TA, I often see the students haphazardly use literature to support their claims while neglecting to do proper detailed observations. You have to be careful with previous works in CA. Since we are doing detailed observations, the data that they use to make their observations in all likelihood different than the one you have at hand. If you fail to understand their data, it's practically useless to use their claim or analysis to support yours. So understand your data first before looking at previous works. There's so much that you can do for a term paper. Literature review or citing references is a bonus. It may ruin your paper if you don't do it properly. Okay, now let's move on to collection analysis as I promised before. For collection analysis, I get that there's so much you can do for a term paper. It takes a lot of time to make a proper collection. Ideally, you do the three steps analysis to all of your data first before identifying and then isolating similar phenomenon to make your collection. But that may not be possible for a term paper 
especially when you juggle with other exams and assignments. Postgraduate students doing CA may have the luxury to do this, this, this three steps analysis as well as some rounds of iterations. So the most efficient way to do collection analysis for a term paper, at least what I can think of now, is that to go through your data and see how a single kind of action or a single kind of action pair get to be done in your data. For example, you have a telephone call data. You identify the different ways people ask the other people to wait. Isolate these extracts where people ask other people to wait, and there you go, you have a collection now. I know that if you're coming from linguistics or exposed to some kinds of linguistic trainings, you will tend to identify linguistic elements in your data. What I can tell you for CA paper, resist that temptation. Go to action or action pair. Your ability to identify linguistic elements will be useful for making detailed observations. After having a collection, what do you do now? Simple. Focus on the similarities and differences among the extracts in your collection. First, argue that they are doing the same task or action. Support your argument with your detailed observations. Second, find out how they are different from one another. This will be the subsection of your analysis. Third, this is the gem. Extra points if you can find this. Find one extract that shows the same action done in slightly different way and resulted in different response than the rest of your collection. Give your detailed explanations. Support with your detailed observations. After doing that, you can write your analysis and structure it in standard academic writing style. You can find your thesis statement by asking a simple question. What's so special about your collection? Remember to do the cleanup stage as well. Free your writing from speculation, mind reading, participants evaluation, and time travel analysis. Okay, this is the end of this video. I hope this video is helpful. You can reach me out through the comment section if you have any question. I do hope that you will have pleasant experience with your CA course and perhaps consider taking advanced CA for the next semester. Okay, that's all for now. Goodbye.